Today we're doing a repair on a VW Caravelle. It's got the V6 motor in it, 2004 model, four-speed auto. And complaint is when it warms up and under load, like going up a hill, it jumps in and out of gear. So we'll just put the scanner on it and see if we can find any fault codes. And the OBD plugs there on the steering column. There we go, we've got a P1142, P0171, P0345, they're mainly engine codes. And you can see that the battery light is actually pulsating there while we're doing the scan. And we've got a PO1192, torque converter lockup clutch mechanical. Seems to be a common problem with these. So I'll just clear the code. Just erasing there. No, oh, doesn't want to erase it. So after we do the check the solenoids, we'll erase that and make sure that code's not coming back up. To get access to the transmission over here, we need to remove this cover. So there's some bolts on the side there, you undo those, and then it'll just drop down onto these pins here. And the front one, it'll just hang down onto that little clip there if you see it. So leave that on until you get the bolts out and then you can just manoeuvre the, the whole plate. comes out towards the front of the vehicle. Taken off the four bolts, two either side, 13 mil. And now we just unclip this and the, it just falls down like that. And at the rear end, there's two little 10 mil bolts, uh, nuts there, take that off and that'll just drop down onto there and then you just slide the whole thing out and we'll give it a good blow out before we take it off I'm just going to drain the oil out of the plug remove this plug this is where you check the oil level there's a little tube in there as well but um, the oil will only come out to the top of that tube 5 mil allen key not all the oil will come out um, it'll only come up to the top of that tube, so just be aware of that, if, especially if it's still hot while you're working on it. And I'll just pop the back three bolts off, and you can see it's still coming out there. So even though you let all the oil out of that plug, there'll still be a little bit of oil there. So I'll just let that drain a bit, and then I can remove these front two bolts, and that'll come down. And these are 10 mil. Hands off. You can see the little tube. You can see why. You can see it's probably about one and a half centimetres higher than the pan. That's why that amount of oil will still leak out even though you drain it out of that plug. And you can see the magnet's contaminated. Fine metal in there. And there are a few little silvery specks through there. Filter's just a push in job. So just be aware that there will be a surge of oil when you pop that filter off as well. So just sort of support it there, let the oil hit the top of the filter when you're taking it off. It's just a matter of taking these little brackets off and sliding them out. You can do this one without removing the valve body. If you do remove the valve body, just make sure you retention those bolts to the specified tension. You can find that on another video, that information. I'm just going to pop all these clips off. The strap, um, the loom is very sensitive, so just don't let it wiggle around too much if you're going to reuse it. 
and fairly easy process. Just a little bit awkward, uh, especially on a four post hoist, uh, especially getting these ones out. And with those solenoids you can't mix them up because they've got a different diameter. You'll find when you get them out, they're a different diameter, so if it's too floppy in it, you know you're in the wrong one. A little tool there that I made up. Uh, you can find that information on, on another video um, with the A1P, A1M transmissions. It's just a little bit of steel with that shaved down just so you can pop those clips off a lot easier without damaging anything. Someone's actually put a tie down strap on this one. You can see that there, so I've just got to chop that off. Obviously they've broken the clips off it at some stage. Just giving that a snip. And make see what they've put on there. And you can see why. Because they've broken the little clips off there. So there's nothing to hold the plug in. They just slide out. And just pull them out by hand. That's the same story over here. They've put a tie down strap on it, so I've got to chop that one off as well. And there it is there. And those clips are just coming out as well. So we'll probably have to replace this strap on this one. And we're just going to remove that little 10mm bolt and there's a plug that goes on that and we'll replace that, that whole strap. And these harnesses, electrical harnesses, they're, they're quite expensive so you always try and reuse it if you can. Um, unless they're damaged of course or cracked. But someone's obviously broken these and uh, that could be a part of the problem as well if there isn't a very good contact. When you put those tie down straps on uh, you'll be able to tighten the outer ones but the inner ones will be loose so these three here were probably a bit loose you'd have to put something underneath just to keep the pressure on it and this one, these ones are probably okay because there's only two of them but here where there's five of them you'll find that the strap will be a bit loose on the middle there. You've blown it out nice and clean before you started any work here and you just basically pinch these plugs and just wiggle them off. So I've got to do it with two hands, can't film it and sometimes you might need to just lever it with a screwdriver as well and to get the plug out it's just one 10mm bolt there and there's a little o-ring on that plug there so 10mm and it just slides out. We can replace that harness. To get these off sometimes you've got to get a bit angry and pinch it and then wiggle it out. It's pretty tight. Probably a good idea to give that a blow out before you pull the plug out as well. There would have been a bit of muck under the under the plug there. And then it's just a matter of taking that 10mm bolt out and it'll just slide out. Go, 10 mil. And that plug just pushes out then. Okay. Looks like it's been off at some stage, so it's all elastic on there too.
Okay, I'm going to take out the solenoids and the little Torx head there is a T20. I've just taken off the top bolt and leave the bracket just hanging there and then you can just slide those out. Okay, I've replaced these. Not to mention, to be able to get this one out, you need to take out that little bolt there. You don't have to take both of them out, just that one. And that's a T40. Solenoids all back in. And now we can put the loom in. Just make sure it's all nice and clean there. And that pushes in from the bottom up. Okay, and there it is. There are two different types on these. There's this one with a little right angle bend. There's another one with the strap just goes straight. And then there's like a long, a long bit of uh, cable there. And I think they're on the uh, 01Ms, the 096s. 1Ps and the 098 transmissions have got this style. So I'm just going to smear a little bit of oil there and just push that plug up and just put the little 10mm bolt through and then we can reconnect these. And just be very careful handling this. Um, you don't want to break these little um, clips on there like the previous person did. They're all located in nicely. A little bit of oil on that seal. No need to put any celastic on there. And you'll find that'll, that'll go in with a little bit of a twist, like this. And I've got it back. I've actually rotated it to the left anti-clockwise and I can just put that little 10 mil back in there okay just make sure that's not going to rub on anything as it's jiggling around you got to be very careful not to damage these tubes. This one had a little split on one side of it. So what we've got is a little tube plastic sleeve that just slides over it and that'll help it. If it breaks off at the bottom then you need to replace it completely. On another video I've got the measurements of those anyway. And I also like to put the magnet up on, on that step there just so it's working top and bottom, more surface area working than instead of just putting it flat in there and it'll just work on one side. Plug, there's always a good idea to take it out. If you just try and knock that cap out, you'll quite often break these little, little tangs there. And you can see that O-ring needs replacing too, it's flattened out a fair bit. So much easier when you've got it out to just put a punch down there and tap that uh, plug off and there's a new seal we can push this back in now and then we can refill it before you put this plug back in or the pan back on it's a good idea to blow it out put a bit of WD-40 or CRC in there and just support the bottom of that plug as you're pushing it in especially when these are a bit older the plastic goes in a little bit harder and you could end up breaking that plug when you're getting it in okay all back together 
plug back in and the filler plugs back in place. We're going to put about four litres of transmission fluid in and then we'll start it up and get it up to temperature. Uh, you can find that information on another video. I've got the same transmission, the A1P, and we want to get it just dribbling out of here. I'm going to fill it with the Tritec, Tritec uh, synthetic low viscosity oil. Bolt cuts have been cleared. I've put about four litres in and it's still not coming out here, so now I'm going to just top it up a little bit. It's good for it to warm up a little bit as well because that oil will expand. So I'll just put a, probably another half a litre in and just see how we go. Still not up to temperature, but you can see it's coming out there. So I'll just let this warm up a bit and that'll just dribble out a little bit. And that's about 35 degrees. So we'll just let it warm up a little bit more and just take that plug out again and we can pay for a test run. Just back from test run. It's shifting right through the whole pattern nicely. It will take a little while to relearn all the parameters because we put new solenoids in it and a new loom. But we'll just make sure that the code hasn't come back. I cleared this, uh, cleared the codes before I went for a test run, and I'm just going to double check, make sure they're not back. Have a look around, make sure there are no oil leaks, make sure you tighten up that little plug there and it all looks good. Yeah, it's got that engine oil leak. And there we go. So we'll put that cover back on, the stone guard, and job's done. And like I mentioned, it will, uh, the shift shift quality and uh, all that sort of thing will change slightly as you drive the vehicle. Um, the computer will relearn everything. Anyway, I hope that's helped. Thank you for watching.